All right, tonight we're going to talk, today we're talking about the Iraq War. Now, why am I discussing the Iraq War? Well, it's been so done, but it's, I guess it's one of those issues of the ages that needs to be discussed. You see, and after all, like, what commentary would be complete if you didn't discuss the Iraq War? So let's talk about the Iraq War. Now, first off, I think it's totally irrelevant at this point whether we went in there for weapons of mass destruction or to stabilize the Middle East or to deal with Saddam Hussein or whatever. The bottom line is we're there. Now, I know people love to revisit those issues. I do believe that there were weapons of mass destruction. I mean, there's a lot of dead Kurds to reinforce that, and there's no evidence of the weapons being destroyed. So, my belief is that the weapons have been moved, which concerns me greatly, because I don't know where they've been moved to. And there are some sources to collaborate that. But, that is not something we can actually discuss right now in detail, because we have very little information on the matter. So the question is, with the war as it is now, should we get out? Should we stay? What's, should, what's the deal? Here's the deal. This is what I believe. When we invaded Iraq, we incurred a debt. The debt we incurred was with the Iraqi people. We had basically said to them that we will rebuild you, we will stabilize you, we are not going to just throw out a dictator and then walk out the door and let things fall apart. Um, we made that promise. A lot of Iraqis believed us. A lot of them are working with us with that belief in mind, with that goal in mind, a goal of a stable Iraq with a stable government. The problem is Syria and Iran along with terrorists and Islamic extremists are undermining those efforts. Iran is killing American troops. Um, so is Syria by allowing uh, these Islamic extremists to go through their country. Now, their goal is, of course, clear. Both of them want to control Iraq. Iran, sorry, both of, both Iran and Syria want to control Iraq. They want the resources. They want the geopolitical power. Now, Democrats say pull out. The anti-war crowd says pull out. But the question is what's going to happen when we pull out? They very rarely spend any time thinking about it. Their standard response is, well that's none of our business. Who cares? Let them hash it out. Where people won't be dying over there. Well I got news for you. For you. That oil supply is a worldwide interest. And to let it devolve down into a pure chaotic civil war where people are shooting each other will drive oil prices up, will cause a lot of suffering in the United States and in Europe, mostly in Europe actually, because we get the majority of our oil from Canada. But it will drive prices up because you have limited, you have reduced effectively a large supply, a supply of oil from the oil market. Now, maybe the liberals want that, but I know how much they ta love taxing oil, so maybe they want high gas prices, I'm not sure, but on a purely practical level it's something that we can't really afford to do. On a purely moral level we will be showing the population of Iraq that we can't be trusted when we give given you an oath that we're going to help them rebuild, we're going to help them become a better country, we're going to help things get stable again. And, in for, and also as a point of fact we actually have succeeded to a large extent. Outside of the random bombings we don't have large-scale street violence. We don't have large-scale riots. We don't have large-scale um, uh, executions. We have small-scale ones throughout the country. We have explosions, but it's not like you have, you know, every day you walk outside, there's a running gun battle going on in the streets. Um, people do go to work. People do build their homes. People do go to school. But it all happens. But unfortunately, there is a large element of subversive elements inside Iraq, backed by Iran, and Syria, and Islamic extremists. So, the honest answer is, I don't think we can pull out now. I think to do so will produ produce a much worse environment, 
and whether or not you think going to the war was fair or just or whatever or if you just hate war to leave will cause much much more bloodshed than if we stay and if you really look at the numbers granted every life is valuable but if you look at the numbers 4,000 troops and I'm, I'm extrapolating to the rounding up 4,000 troops in four years does not constitute um, a, a massive loss of military personnel so anyways there you have it and uh, there's my reasons why we must stay in Iraq and my viewpoint on that issue I know the standard responses don't worry about it I've heard them forever and a day and the media makes sure that everyone knows exactly how many um, uh, troops are dead today and how and they don't tell you anything about how many successes have been done in Iraq but that's the nature of the true media it's anti-war it's pro-democrat and they think this will get them in power thank you very much and you have yourself a good day bye bye